What's up, people? Happy, happy Sunday. Welcome to the Blackwell Project Sunday edition. Listen, every week we do our town hall meeting. This week's town hall meeting is the economics of love. To be specific, the economics of black love, right? Because everything we talk about is about black folks and black finance. And what better thing to talk about as it relates to black finance and black wealth than relationships, right? Because we know that you can't really form a real nation or a real community without having families. So the stronger our families are, the stronger our, our communities will be. So that is tonight's topic. I want to say what's up to the genius people in the building and my team, my co-workers, my panelists. How y'all doing today? Good. Everybody, everybody. How y'all? Chill. Yeah, what's up, there, brother? Chilly, chill. <laughs> Chilly, chill. So I got to I gotta acknowledge this, right? I think we all have become addicted to Chatty House, a.k.a. known as Clubhouse. Yes. I think my Luke is kind of leading the charge and distributing the crack, but um, we all have become addicted at this point. <laughs> so, are y'all really? <laughs> hey, listen, I just want to know why you, Man, why you, Courtney, uh, and Tracy didn't tell nobody. Y'all just jumped on and had your all of the world going on. Me and Jimmy had to find out by accident that y'all were even on Clubhouse. We pinged you, or at least I thought I did. You're pinged. No, 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 no. I was already on it because when me and Malik got on, we was. I'm just, no, I'm no, no. About yeah, not for the day, just in, in general. But y'all, y'all had the app for a while before we even even knew about the app. I didn't. I, I didn't even crack the seal on it when I first got my invite, and I was like, oh, something new, whole another app, whatever. I'll get into it when I get into it, and then I would scroll and see a couple different things, but I had not really even. Figure it out, maneuver my way, or any of that. So, y'all so did more than me. <laughs> I feel like I might have been the first person on Clubhouse. I'm a, that makes you sense. probably was, and I'm gonna tell you why, right? I'm because because when Malik told me, I was trying to I was trying to ignore it, not join. He was like, "Yo, stop playing, get on here. It's it's, it's the real deal." And I got on there. So me and him are on there, like, well, you know, we let's let's get the Black Wolf team. We looked up, like, oh, Kamari's here. Oh, Courtney's here. Oh, Tracy's here. We knew we knew, we knew Corey went there because Corey's anti anti. Um, y'all been there already. Y'all, y'all was already on there, you know, kicking it and whatnot. So no. I, so I told Kamari to get on, and then Tracy. I was in Tracy's welcome room, and that's the only reason why I think I was the first person there. Yeah, because I didn't know about it. I mean, I kind of heard rumblings about it, but I didn't know about it. And so oh, yeah. for everybody that's watching. We're talking about Clubhouse, right? So there is a Blackwell project room on Clubhouse. We've applied. We've been accepted. We are now official. So we will be spreading the gospel of Black Wealth on Clubhouse as well. And to be fair, the gospel of Black Wealth is already being spread there now. But we're just going to add a little bit more and add our season of sauce to it as well. But, yeah, Corey, I mean, I'm sorry, not Corey. Jimmy and and, and uh, Malik are on there. Doing all kinds of shenanigans. Oh, I'm locked. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. <laughs> listen, no, listen, no, no, no. I was, I was on there last night till four a.m. Oh my goodness. Till four. Till four. Talking about what? So no. So what, what was dope about it is, I was trying to. So actually, I went up there to create the room today. Right, the room I created the day was called. Um, I had a different name, but I changed it to, like, basically. Help me, help me, teach me how to get my digital product to a hundred million in sales, right? And I was wanted to see who would jump in and give game. Like it was just a, a, uh, an experiment. And so, but well, right when I created that room, I went into a digital sales room, and just so happened there were only six people in the room, and four of the people are like professional digital marketers. We're talking about like they they manage like nine figure accounts. And they gave me all game. And I was even though I was tired, I'm like, when am I gonna have an opportunity to sit with four different people in this field and have like, you know, a group mentorship? So I yeah, I locked that, took like a lot of notes. You know, my game is my, my, my game is quite quite flat right now. You know, I'm uh, I'm up there. So they they, they, they got me. And so one of the guys one of those actually, cats pulled up today. What's that? Oh yeah, and, the, and, the, and I was yeah, gonna say what you was getting ready to say. Like one of the guys pulled up today and gave and gave me all kinds of game. I was like, "Is this free?" <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so you know, the money that I was complaining about for the iPhone, I already got that back plus some. Right. All right. So listen, y'all. I don't know who in the audience because I see people are following in it right now. Who in here is on Clubhouse, aka Chatty House? 
Um, if you are, make sure you connect with us. Each one of us are on there. Make sure you follow up. Corey's coming. We going get we getting more there. We dragging him on, y'all. No, Corey. He, he done said he's gonna get an iPhone. Listen, we gotta put that out there publicly. We've been he been kicking and punching the whole way, y'all. But he's a team, he's a team player, so he's coming up. Yo, yo, come they, on with, they, the, they come on with the positive score. peer pressure. Come on with this positive peer pressure shit. That's <laughs> not positive <laughs> peer pressure. That's what you said. You said you was coming. You said I'm just I'm just stating the facts. Let, let, they, 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 it they won't be right know. without you, Corey. We no, need no, you. no. I thought I thought what happened in, in, in the back room, stay in the back room, man. Don't 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 put me on front street like that. <laughs> no, listen, we're we gonna see more of Corey gonna be in um in, in, in Mace Betha room. Mace Betha <laughs> Yo, don't put yeah. me in there. <laughs> and I see Chad, I see Chad Moss is in is the yeah. building now too. So um, y'all better yeah. get shout, on. Shout out to Sean Jackson, who is Shout out to Deshaun Jackson, who was in the chatty house telling stories while the Eagles was actually playing, and he's like not paying attention to nothing football. He's on chatty house. <laughs> hey, he got his bag, so I guess you can do that. So, all right, everybody, moving right along. Thanks. We we want to talk. About, next thing up is you know we talk about the Bob of the week, the Bob of the week, the Black Owned Business of the week, and so Courtney has the honor and privilege of presenting that to us today. And she's got some special stuff because she's carrying the weight this week, y'all. She's doing. Not only just the Bob of the Week, but she's also going to do the Black Icon of the Week. So go ahead, Courtney. Tell us what you got. All right. So Bob of the Week is Avenue Black. Avenue Black has been in existence for quite some time, actually. But they just opened up a storefront in Gloucester Premium Outlets, which is maybe about 20 minutes from Philly. Some parts of 20. Some parts of Philly. Not all. Um, but really just at the bottom um, of 42 before it goes into Tr Turnersville, New Jersey. So um just black owned line. Um, it's my cousin and another partner. And not only do they have a clothing line, they actually have a, um, a studio, um, a photo studio or um, where you can get pictures taken, but also a co-working space all in the premium. Um, outlet. It's interesting enough because you're like, yo, we're in the middle of COVID, but there's just so many different ways to kind of um, engage in this space. Um, he also says, you know, hey, if you guys want to do your podcast live here, you're more than welcome to do so. Really excited. It's a really nice space. I actually had a chance to FaceTime Kamari yesterday to kind of show him the space and kind of, you know, brag on my cousin. My cousin is actually, he's significantly younger than me. I wouldn't, I can't remember how, by how much, but in 1993, he was diagnosed with um, kidney cancer. So he had a kidney room and that was when he was two years old. So let me put that in perspective. So his, wow. so he he and Avenue Black they have um, also Urbane and Urbane is completely his brand and everything is revolving around the year 1993 or 93 because that's when he was diagnosed, and he's just pretty much a a pre a story of triumph and just kind of create creativity in terms of just I think when I think about Black excellence I think about him. But interesting enough, I also to talk about my grandfather. He is Jason Charles Richardson the fourth. My great grandfather was the first entrepreneur in our family, and he was um, a shop owner. He was born in 1900, and so it's just interesting to kind of watch all of us be entrepreneurs. So after my grand, my great grandfather, my dad, and my my dad's generation, all a lot of them are entrepreneurs. My father's an entrepreneur. I kind of grew up under that, and then to see him, myself, and then also my cousin, who's a book planner in the D.C. area. It's just it's just nice to see, and that's when I thought think about black excellence. I think about black legacy. So, I mean, I have an Avenue Black shirt on. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm just very very proud of him. But um, the stuff is amazing. Show um, one more time, Courtney. Oh, oh, the shirt. There you go. Yeah, that's um, dope. You know, they're the quality. That name. That name is fire. Yes, it is. So shout out to Jason Charles Richardson. I call him JJ, but. Um, it's just really dope, just the stuff that he's been doing. And um, he's just really out there. Um, you can follow him on Urban US um, on Instagram, but he's also the Charles, the Charles J. Gracious, and my, my watch is going off. Maybe that's why Corey doesn't like iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just, you know, shout out to him. Shout out to him. Super excited. Um, they have really great stuff. I actually have a pair of uh, socks from I Like Socks. So these are socks that are actually by his other brand, which is called Urbane. So. Nice, nice. Listen, it's always great when you can brag on your family, on your loved ones. I mean, that's just, that is what this is all about. So, kudos to your family, Courtney. Kudos to your cousin. All right, everybody, y'all know the deal. Let's check in with with the uh, folks that are here right now. Say our hellos, Latoya Marie. 
Good evening to you as well. All right, listen, as we are checking in, give us your comments, right? Tonight's episode topic is the economics of love, the economics of black love. What do y'all think it would take to strengthen the economics of black love? And when we're talking about black love, we're talking about relationships, right? Romantic relationships, but we're also talking about family relationships also. So what do y'all think? What can make that better? What can make that stronger? What can make that unbreakable? Uh, Adrian, how you doing? Hey y'all, you back in the car, Corey? <laughs> Yo, as long as I got a two year old, you know what I mean. Once, once he, when he, when he in the house, I'm, yeah. I can't be unless y'all want to hear him stomping like a damn elephant. Hey Elizabeth, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Karan, Karan. Oh, by the way, y'all, we did our first clubhouse room on Chatty House or Clubhouse, and Karan was there as well. So we appreciate you being there. And oh, I believe Sean, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. And I believe Sean was in the building too. So shout out to, to Karan. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just follow Karan on Chatty House. Shout out to Karan yeah. and Sean. Karan, Karan is a is a wonderful photographer and videographer. Does a lot of top notch, high end level work. I won't put all his resume out there in the street, but he's done some major corporation work too. So check him out, y'all. Miss Sean, how you doing? Miss Sean, you gotta get um the 10K project on uh Clubhouse. So no, Adrian, Clubhouse is not a black creative no. app. That's the only problem. It's funny, me and Jimmy was on it. It. Yeah. Um, actually, that should be a show topic, right? When will when will the black community have a real app that is black owned, black controlled, and um done well? I mean, so, it can't it can't do well. You know, um it's it. funny. I was in one of <clears throat> I was Blake. in uh, one of the Silicon Valley rooms the other day. And um, there's a there's a there's a gentleman, a black brother, who's created an app which is very similar called the Cookout. Um, but it's not it hasn't dropped yet. But he was actually in there, and it was a lot of other Silicon Valley people that like were talking about how great of a job he is. Uh, he does working for other companies, but he's finally creating his own. And I was wondering whether Clubhouse was like you know not trying to put it out there whether it was taken from him or he's like basically uh, copying them. But it's called the Cookout, which is coming soon. Um, he sent me the the website. Like, I'm gonna find it and put it in the um in the comment section so people take a look because you can get an invite to his thing thing now. But it's called the cookout. Hey Jimmy, let's get on that. Let let's get on that. We we gotta support a black app. I mean, at the at the at the least, right? At the very least. I mean, so, yeah. But I what I was saying is, let's understand. Uh, Solange still owns Black Planet. <laughs> are you serious? Or are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That's no, the no, she don't own that no more. Black she don't. It was, it was, it was bought. Black Planet, like Black, Black Planet, was bought by um. What's the the one that's public now? What's the black company? Uh, that's um, ah uh, um, the, the black uh, what's it called? Um, the cat, not Kathy Hughes. What's the um, Radio, Radio One? Radio they bought. Yeah, that's Kathy Hughes. They own TV it now. One. Yeah, oh, they own it. Okay, TV One. Well, Radio One. Well, okay. yeah, they they yeah. they own Black Planet. They own Black Planet. Um, and they tried to make a push, and I went on their app and. Yeah, so I ended up back on Instagram. But um, with that being said, though, uh, yeah, they bought it in two thousand and eight. Oh, was that was that long ago? I thought some launch. I thought the launch bought it recently. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was one of them Twitter rumors yeah, that Radio people ran with. Yeah, how about that? How about that? All right, uh, Nikki Parker, how you doing? Oh, Nikki, I'm sorry. Thank you for putting the pronunciation. Yeah. Oh, look, looking forward to this combo tonight. Hey, y'all from Baltimore. Be more is in the house. What's up, Sean? Thank you for joining us earlier. All right, Sean's even encouraging Corey to get on Clubhouse. Finally, thank you. <laughs> All right, Karan, you're new to it. Karan, what do you think about it? How you like it? Don Johnson, what's good, Don? How are you, sir? Nairobi, how you doing, Nairobi? Yo, yo. Angela, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Okay, great. Definitely purchasing the Avenue Black Apparel. That's dope. Mm-hmm. Let them know. Let them know. Courtney uh, recommended it from the Blackwell Project. <laughs> uh, can we get a link, Court, to all of that? Uh, are we talking about Avenue Black? Of course. Okay, yes. I got it right here. I'll throw it in the chat. I will throw it in the chat. Give me one second. Yo. Shout out to all the black designers we rocking this evening because I see Corey got a black designer on. I got a black designer. I think Malik do too. 
Then get to the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's my favorite one. That's the one I was supposed to get. Yeah, one. I got Finance Rebel. Finance Rebel, baby. I got, I got this joint. It's free. Finance Rebel. I got a joint. Um, it's a brother, Trinidad Salim, Unlimited Wealth. Uh, Clothing company, you know, it says stocks investor trader. So it's a it's a black it's a brother that make this one too. So shout out to uh, Trinidad Salim and Unlimited Um Wealth. You know what I'm saying? No, no, so no. yeah, we we are we are supporting uh, black folks this evening as always. All black, everything. Black. I support everybody that's black. What's up, Andre? Peace to you as well. Romaine James, how how are you? Miss Williams, how you doing? Yeah, okay, sure. And that was you. Yep, you were there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, have y'all tried fan base? I don't even know what fan base is. Anybody know? Come on, that not is? another one, not another one. I, I can't do another one, man. And he said it's black owned. <laughs> wow, all right, I okay. could try it. I'll try it then. I'll try it then. All right, all right, there we go. So, this is the uh, the black one that's similar to Clubhouse. WW. Your invite yeah, on its way. Oh. Okay, Willard. What's up, Willard? How you doing? Hey, Willard. Hi, right. Courtney's jumping in. Mm. All right, so I'm still figuring out how to use Clubhouse. <laughs> uh, search me, Elizabeth. Uh, friend me on there. Just jump yeah. in. The rooms. There's a bunch of anytime Maybe. you see like the Clubhouse, <laughs> uh, the, the Clubhouse announcements. Um, jump in those. They'll kind of give you a good uh, overview of how to use the app. You were saying something, Jimmy? No, no, no. I was just saying, like, you know, we can set up a room once it's done, you know, because I'll be back on there, but that's either here or there. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, listen, everybody, tonight's conversation is the economics of love. Uh, make sure y'all put your comments in there. Let us know what you think. What would make what would make black love, the economics of black love better? What do y'all think? All right. So we talked about this a bit um, in, in Clubhouse tonight. We talked about a lot of things. We talked about therapy. We talked about communication. One thing I think that really stuck out, though, and it's a recurring theme, is that we are still dealing with past traumas. Mm -hmm. So those past traumas really preclude us or hinder us or impede us from really getting our money together from a relationship standpoint, right? There was one lady on there, shout out to uh, Jaw Speaks, that talked about some of her thoughts around money really came from how she saw her mother grow up growing up. And she was a single black mother. And so she didn't want to really co-mingle money with her husband. Um, she didn't really want to do anything together as a family. And that created problems. What do y'all think about that? Mm. I mean, one of the I things... Think that's, I think that's common. <laughs> I really think it's common. I don't think, I don't think that's like uncommon, right? Because... You know, I see a lot of two family households with that got two different ideas mm-hmm. about how to live. Ooh. Right. So, you know, they they're they're pulling in the same direction, right? Both people want financial independence and financial freedom, but they're not coming together financially to reach that goal. So I see that a lot. I see with you know, people both both parties make 80, 70, 80, 100 grand a year, and they living at the poverty level because they they, they got bills. And, and nothing is is nothing is concentrated. It's, it's just like it's a it's a, a it's like society, you know. What I mean, like it's like black society. Like we have a lot of millionaires and we have a lot of people doing a lot of good things, but it's not aggregated. And so when your resources aren't aggregated, you don't go as far. Now, Corey, so, you just sit on something. You just sit on something. I want to I want to pick on you for a minute. So you said you got two you got two households going in two different directions, right? So you talked about basically not being on the same page. One is zigging while the other is zagging. Why is that important? Because my thing is, if you you can love one another, but if y'all goals don't match up, y'all still gonna grow apart. Mm-hmm. It's not about love. It's about it's about growing. Mm-hmm. If you don't grow together, you are gonna grow apart. Is 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 either is is either one. It's either grow together or grow apart. It's not about love. So if you don't grow together, like people change over time. So if y'all not growing together, y'all gonna grow apart, and then that fracture is going that is gonna keep showing up. It's, it's gonna show up in one place, and then it's gonna show up in a thousand places because y'all not growing together. Y'all not, y'all don't have the same goals and ambitions and ideas, and so that's really where the fractures 
get, you know, those, those little fissures turn to big fractures. So, you know, that's that's really what my take on it is. I don't know about anybody else. Gotcha. What about you, Jimmy? I agree with what Corey said. And part of the reason I agree is because I've actually seen that play out um, in other people's relationships. And it's, it's, it's interesting because one of the things he said is you're always growing, right? But the thing is, are you growing together or are you growing apart? Um, to me, marriage is a cheat code to wealth, right? But um, something that I heard Courtney say uh, earlier on uh, Chatty House, she was saying that you have to be with someone with the same ideas. And it kind of, kind of, same thing uh, that, that Corey said. Um, that's a cheat code, though. If you can find someone and you guys can communicate and be on the same page, you'll grow exponentially. You'll grow faster than you would without them. It's, it's actually one of the well, one of the cheat codes and things that we don't talk about as it relates to wealth. We talk we can talk about all the instruments in the world, but having a solid um, foundation and relationship to me is a cheat code in wealth. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, that's even shown in the numbers. When you look at your average millionaire, the average millionaire is married. And, you know, when you look at that and it, there's and you can look at the way the tax code even treats a married couple, right. you can see that it's actually, you know, the married couple gets benefits. Um, they get a lot of benefits. I mean, if I if I die, you know, and I have the ability, if I'm my estate is over what I think it's like over 11 million. I think that's what it is. I don't know what the estate exemptions are anymore. Don't quote me. Um, I think pretty high, but I share that to say I can give that to my spouse, and my spouse can basically take that exemption with them too. So we double together, we have twenty-two million or whatever that we can exempt. So, That's what it is. so I share that to say those things are really important. The same thing that also happens is that um, when we're doing gifting, when I do accelerated gifting, when we have those conversations for five twenty-nine plans, five twenty-nine plans is one of the very few places you can do accelerated gifting. What I mean by accelerated gifting is basically you have a gift exemption every single year, but when you're married, when you when you do the accelerated gifting, you could do that over five years. But if you're married, you could double it. So basically, you're pushing money out of the estate and giving and gifting it to a family member. So you're not only pushing it out of your estate, so it's not getting taxed by the government, but you're also giving your family member a benefit. So, it, but again, you're able to double your benefit as a unit. So there's so many, and there's so many other in, instances and examples of that in the tax code to show you that marriage is actually what the government wants you to do. Right. And just to kind of piggyback on um, Courtney's point, right? The, the tax code is definitely Chico. She definitely said that on um, the about the hood podcast, right? But the government always is trying to incentivize people to do things that is beneficial to the U.S. economy. That's why they're giving you that benefit when you're married. Now, Malik, you just came in the room. Malik, I'm going to pick on you just a little bit, but you talk about this stuff openly. You even talked about it on this show. What do you think about the the economics of love, especially black love? And I've heard, and I'm going to preface this by saying, you talked about how your wife was there to hold you down while you were going through rough times. We talked about it today when we did our pre-show. And you said, you said before that she never held that against you. You can you talk about that? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, no. Nah, so that don't really you know the story. We haven't we're listening. Um, I guess one of the is that I, um I had a, a mortgage office, right? I had a um, I was a mortgage banker. I had an office that I owned, and I ended up I ended up everything. Lost the bills. Like you going in and out. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna phone to come back. All right. All right, uh, Tracy, what do you have on this? So a couple of things that I have on this conversation is a few things. Um, when we start talking about breaking down the love and economics of it, um, the conversation I have is for people who are getting into partnerships that are due to love and those who are already in marriages or legal partnerships. Um, the first thing in the foundation of it all is going to have to be trust. You're gonna to have to create these safe spaces that people feel comfortable exposing themselves and telling you about their financial situation, their shortcomings, some of the things that they were not taught growing up or some of the bad habits that they were taught growing up to be able to have that space to discuss the vehicle of your relationship, of your marriage, and where it's going to go. So that way you don't have somebody who's paddling 
and then somebody who's waiting with their hand in the water, trying to push the boat with their hand. Because one is effective and one is not. But you need to have that space to be able to discuss all of that. So that way, as the vehicle of the relationship can go in the direction that you both want it to go. Now, I feel like once you do all of that and you're on the same pages, you guys can decide where your vehicle is going. Where do you guys want to go? Do you want to go and make sure you have enough money to travel every year? Do you want to go to have enough money to make sure that your children could always go to the best schools? Like those are the kind of discussions that you have to have and the communication has to be open in these relationships to be able to have viable economics in love. And I agree with Jimmy, like if you can get through all of that, that's a cheat code because it's double the effort, it's double the responsibility, it's double the movement. And now we are literally two-headed monster taking names, like kicking behind and taking names. You know, it's, it's interesting, right? Because <clears throat> um, I'm always shocked when I when I when I you know meet couples to talk to to talk to folks who haven't had those kind of conversations before they enter into a marriage. Like they don't talk about money at all. I mean, I've I've seen folks don't even talk about like how they want to raise their kids, and they end up married, and they have like Corey said, they're moving two different ways. I'm like, how do you not have <laughs> finance conversations or conversations about? Uh, you know, um, your idea of what marriage is, um, you know, so to me, that's interesting. Uh, and that's why I know what Corey says to be true, that people sometimes get all the way to the point of marriage and are moving in two different ways. Yeah. And I always find it interesting, you know, just all the years of doing tax and financial advising work, it's not uncommon to find people who are two separate households going to two different ways. That's why Corey's point. I mean, he started us off with a banger, right? I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. But you know, I think we gotta be willing to go deeper. And I know some of the comments are talking about it, and I'll pull them up in a second, but we gotta be willing to be open and honest, transparent, and vulnerable with our loved one, you know, that we're walking through life with to really talk about these things. Because again, you're fighting yourself, you're begging, you're banging yourself up against the head, y'all headbutting one another over money, over the ideas of how y'all wanna live life, and y'all really aren't gonna be as prosperous as you potentially could. As you potentially could. Like y'all have no idea how many times in the conversations of just a couple buying a house that two people are not on the same page. One person thinks that they're going to buy this huge, beautiful mansion. And the other person is like, I don't have enough money for that. But that's the, so I don't I know if y'all saw this right. I put, in the middle. <laughs> but I put, I put a meme in the Blackwell Project group, by the way. All y'all go follow, go join the Blackwell Project group. But I put a meme in the Blackwell Project group and it showed the lady basically talking about going over her expenses and how much money she made. And like she was in shock over how much money she made, but she didn't have a budget. So again, it's amazing how many couples don't have a real idea of where their money is going. They spend out, they spend a lot of money out eating out. They spend a lot of money, you know, going out in entertainment, things like that. It's a little bit different now with COVID. But, you know, again, they don't have a central place of operating to really start to plan all this Man, stuff out. Listen, on that point, I know people who know where other people's money go way better than they Ooh. know where their own money go. They, I know I know people with spouses that will track the hell out of what their spouse spend and don't never uh -huh. track their own Adam. spending. That is, that is the epitome of absolute mm -hmm. madness. They will track their spouse's spending down to the damn penny. Correct. I don't, without, you know, because of trust right. issues and won't track their own spending. So those relationships are going nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like we need to track, we need to track our expenses. You tracking my expenses, and then you you just went and bought a Birkin bag two days ago and, 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 and stuffed it with, with, with Prada with Prada blouses. I don't know, like. How do, I don't know how that works. I don't know how those people live their life because that much worry, I would never get any sleep. Right? <laughs> how do you live life in such a state that you're so worried about somebody else that you can't function properly? I, I mean, I agree. I agree. I agree. But it kind of all goes down to uh, 
against Russ. But by the way, shout out to all the sugar daddies buying Birkin bags. What it was the internet saying, you know, you're not a real man if you're not buying a Birkin bag. All kinds of foolery that's going on out there. But sadly, a lot of us, believe it. Jimmy talked about it earlier the fact that we see stuff on memes and we believe it. So mm -hmm. that, that's creating a problem with our money, too, sadly. But, you know, everybody want to kind of keep up with the Joneses. We got to develop our own plans. We got to have our own goals. We got to have our own visions and forget about what everybody else is yeah. doing. Yeah, that's so important. Stop, stop trying to keep up with, with the Combses. Not the Joneses, yeah. the Combses, though. We don't we'll say, we'll, we'll say the Joneses. The <laughs> All right, let's let's check in um, with our folks. All right, so Kahan, say how you doing, Kahan? Kahan, by the way, shout out Ooh, to you, bro. Shout out to your wife for yeah. getting her, her real estate license. That was dope. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, Nairobi said I, I missed the link up on Clubhouse today. Yeah, Nairobi, follow me. I'm sure you follow some of us, but again, if you're oh, yeah. on Clubhouse. I, I'm a, I'm a Gonna if she was talking about the other one. She was talking about the one with, with Jim and Malik and them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, at either rate, uh, follow. They, they was on there too. They was on there too, Cor. We we all was in there. Yeah. Oh man, true. so that's 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 how y'all do. I'm Let's, just messing. I, I just shout it was on there yesterday too, Corey. Your own girl. Hey, listen. That's hey. These, no. these is all, all of the folks, all man. I, 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 I know and love all of these folks, man. <laughs> Any, anybody, yeah. anybody from Philly that's in this space was in our uh, our, our room yesterday. Like it was, it was right. crazy. Except right. for non Apple users like me, huh? Yes, exactly. Well, look who's putting their stuff out on front. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, now Roby, go over and, and you know search the Blackball Project and join the group. All right, so all right, all right, Ooh, the Hamiltons, yeah. Carolina. All right, ain't no romance with no shout finance. Out to the Hamiltons. Hey, shout out to the Ham. Hey, y'all, y'all gonna sing? Yeah, big, big up, big up, big up. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. They, they make dope. They last, last album was fire, too, by the way. Shout yeah. out to y'all for the last album. Yo, Seven when, fire emojis. When they roasted Trump, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep teaching. All right, sure will. Yeah, appreciate thank you. Thank you. All right, Latoya says, need to have open, honest communication about where you stand financially. Mm -hmm. I understand your money languages and the relationships set common goals for the partnership. I agree. I, I want to say this mm -hmm. though. I, I do want to say this. Um, a lot of times we talk about pulling credit reports. Nobody ever talks about pulling tax grant transcripts. So people be getting, people be getting married with whole back tax issues and nobody knows. So listen, you can check the credit reports, but also check the tax transcripts. Please do. Please, please, please. Yo, Kamari, you're a legend, yo. I'm going to tell you why you're a legend. You're such a tax guy. You could be having a conversation with Kamari about, like, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He'll somehow bring it to tax. Everything always goes back to tax for Kamari. <laughs> you know what, Jimmy? I'll be honest, though. I think Courtney is more of a tax guy than me, though. Oh, uh, yeah. She yeah. All, she always... No, but she don't do it. But, but, the, but, but the way you do it, though, you somehow always bring a conversation to tax. Like, always. you could be talking about, like, food or something. And it's like, somehow, you have to talk about tax chicken and you get to the tax, like you always get it back to tax. Yeah, I, I believe tax is one of the biggest attacks on wealth, especially black wealth, that we have a lot of control over that we don't take advantage of. Like Courtney says, the tax code is a cheat code. I mean, she said that, and that's facts. I try, I try to share facts. That's a t shirt, right there. I, yeah, yeah. I need to do a t shirt, but I think one of the things that I would like to talk about is that. When we're in a partnership with someone, you need to be trust. We have to, trust is such a big deal, and you have to be trust. You have to trust your partner enough to share your ideas and your dreams. And we were talking about carrying on past traumas. Is that a lot of our relationship problems? A lot of our I shouldn't even say relationship problems. Our money problems are actually problems inside of ourselves. And mm. the, it's so important that we need to. We actually need to seek therapy. Um, and it's not anything that is bad, but it's again, if you're trying to, you can't go into a relationship half, you know, half made. Um, I hate the conversation when they're saying, oh, so-and-so completes me. You complete yourself, but are, you know, you guys are supposed to be two, you know, things together and, you know, you kind of form like Voltron. Um, but you can't do that if there's something inherently wrong or there's a crack in your foundation. And, and I think a lot of us carry those cracks in our foundations. I think Monica talked about it in the comments about being single parents and kind of watching that and mirroring those things of kind of understanding and normalizing what may not be or should be normal.
So that, that therapy piece is so important because then we can talk about, you know, our trust issues. We can talk about our financial issues because a lot of your financial issues have nothing to do with finance and something else. So. I mean, yeah, but a, lot of us, a lot of us wear our trauma like a like a Boy Scout badge. Like, oh, I had this trauma and that trauma and that trauma, and you just wear them joints down your arm like 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 they Boy Scout badges. You're right. So <laughs> a, a lot of people hook to, a lot of people hooked to the to the trauma. So right. you Correct. know, it's kind of hard to get rid of trauma when people wear that trauma like a suit of armor. Right. Like, so it's like, oh, I got more trauma than you. Like, right. we we be having trauma contests. Trauma. <laughs> The Trauma Olympics. I agree. I, I will say this though. I will say this though. Most therapists or counselors will tell you that a lot of us experience trauma in our childhood. Mm -hmm. and that shows up in our adulthood and creates very, very problematic patterns. Um, so uh, you, we have to look at that as well. We have to look at that as well. Now, Karan says not only dealing with our own past traumas, but also there is trauma encoded in our DNA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. Can we talk. We talked about that. We talked about that when we talked about the black church and the the diet, and is that you know no amount of food is going to get you into hypertension land, or well it can, but you know just the fact that we're all predisposed to hypertension and diabetes, and it's not just a function of what we're eating; it's actually in our it's in our DNA. So that's the yeah. conversation we were having, and we keep need it. We need to keep having it. Yep, yeah, I agree. All right. So Adrian Anderson said, "My granny told me if I get married, I always have an account." And your maiden name just because. Why does she say that though, Adrian? I don't want to the conclusions. But why does she say that? Now, before we go any further, Malik got interrupted. So, Malik, please share that story uh, with us. Can yeah, but this, no, listen, man. Um, Apple does not want to talk to Samsung right now. I think they give me problems. So, but, um, so no, so what I was saying is that. You know, when I had my mortgage company back in 08, you know, I was doing pretty well when I ended up losing it uh, through the recession. And um, my, my money was actually frozen at the um, at the bank. So I couldn't even get any money out. So I was dead in the water. And so I mean, I didn't make any money right for about eight months. And then, um, you know, and I actually ended up moving to North Carolina just to get a job. And um, I didn't make. I did a deal up here in Philly so I can afford to come back to Philly. But, you know, my wife held like all the bills and everything down for like that year. Like everything I paid, like I didn't buy groceries. I didn't pay utilities. I didn't pay the mortgage. Like, I didn't pay anything, you know, for that, um, for that entire year. And that gave me, give me opportunities to kind of, you know, get back on my feet. Right. And we, and it was never that I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like R. Kelly in a Sparkle video, be careful what you say to me, right? I didn't feel like that, you know, she wasn't like handing me like. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it like she wasn't like, you know, hounding me, go get a job. Like, cause she already knew that I really, you know, I was working. I just didn't have any, you know, any money, you know, and I wouldn't. It's like, you know, she held it down. And so, and I, I, really, I know that that's not the scenario. Like I'm in the, I'm in a, a bunch of groups and people ask, like, should the man pay? Oh, girl, leave him. He ain't got nothing. You could do that all by yourself. You know, I get all of those. But that just wasn't the dynamic. That wasn't the situation with you know, myself and my wife. Like, you know, she she definitely um, helped me down and, you know, for me to get back on my feet, you know, in those circumstances. Gotcha. She, was more than shooting the, she was more than shooting in the gym. Oh, yeah. Right. She, definitely, she definitely was more than shooting in the gym. She, she put me to the gym. And get, and get lunch money. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I, exactly. I, I want to take this opportunity to, to transition a little bit, right? Because Malik brought up something that I see talked about often because that was actually where I was born, Malik. I mean, now that we're a little bit older, right, people are, aren't getting married um, as young as they used to. And now people are getting married when they're older. And I am seeing a lot of sisters saying that if a man is not at a certain place financially, that they don't want to be bothered with him. Do y'all think that's a good thing or a bad thing as it relates to black wealth and creating families with, with financial means? What do y'all think? I, I, I kind of think is I think I kind of think is 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 about person is is it's a personal choice, right? Like I'm not I'm not gonna shit on nobody personal choice. I don't have to agree with it for it to be facts for them, right? So what's facts for your life don't have to be facts of mine. So if you don't want to get married to a broke person, don't get married to a broke person. But don't complain about the 
the the circumstances that the box that you put yourself in. You you created that box. Don't 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 complain about the box, right? So, cause you know, there's there's when you set limitations, those are the limitations that you have. And so, when you're looking for somebody that doesn't have, you know, that has these X amount of qualifications and accountability and those kind of things, if, if people don't meet those standards and you end up in a place where you don't find that person, I don't want to hear the bitching and moaning and complaining about how you can't find that. Because one, either one, change the standards, not lower them or or raise them, but change them to get to the place where you want to be, or stop complaining about that shit. Like that's what really drives me crazy. So, hey, Corey, we need you. We need you in the car more. You dropping bombs today, brother. <laughs> Tracy, what do you think about this? What you got on this? So I think. Um, the institution of marriage has changed over several decades. Um, the reason why women were getting married or were getting married in say the 50s or the 60s are definitely very different reason for marriage in 2020. Um, I believe that the dynamics are definitely different as far as women being very career minded and being some of the solid breadwinners in the household has changed the dynamic of marriage. And I think the discussions are very much different on why your reasoning for relationship. And both people have to go in open with eyes open and discussions had about what their expectations are and where they are as people and where they can be together. So with that being said, um, I can see why some of the relationships with women where they're waiting longer to get married and it's not taking, they're not getting married very soon because there is a lot of uh, emphasis on independence, education, and career for women at this time because there's such an empowerment movement for women because we are starting to have a lot more voices in the business models in the C-suites in a lot of different spaces that's making it like we want a seat at the table. We want to be able to talk about it. We want to be able to do that. And it's taking longer. The education from a regular four year degree is not enough. There's master's degrees, there's JD degrees, and there's a lot of things that are put into the equation where connectivities and marriage is kind of at the back burner. Now, if it happens during that process, a lot of people will take advantage of it and they will marry people while they're in school or while they're still on that upward climb and that ladder. But it's not happening as soon as the 20s range where a lot of women are still getting to know who they are. All right. But what about what about the sisters who are a little bit older, let's say they're 35 plus and they say they do not want to marry a broke dude. They do not even want to entertain a relationship with a broke dude. What do you think about that, Tracy? So <laughs> I'm going to say this. There are a lot of dynamics to that question. You're beating around the bush. And I like <laughs> to say <laughs> she don't, she don't want to say what she want to say. Yeah, she because made I'm a mean, woman. I'm a woman and I get it. I really, really do. And I'm definitely a woman who works hard for my own name and my own brand and that kind of thing. So I understand the dichotomy. The concern I have with is there are delusions of grandeur. There are some women who expect some things that they're really not giving themselves, that they're really not consistent with themselves, that that's something that they kind of got to deal with in therapy. But in the conversation of them not wanting a quote unquote broke dude, I think it's kind of like you got to break down what broke means. Like, are they on my same level? Do they have what I have? Do they, they have, have less than you. Do they have less than me? Starting and I think, at zero. And I think the, the conversation with that is you have to be solid in the discussion of the trajectory on whether or not they are ambitious. Are they working towards something? Are they someone that is a, a, a man that's I have nothing right now, but I got a plan and I got things I'm putting together to do. That's something different. But you also have to understand as a man, when it comes to women, the dynamics change when the woman is the alpha. And you wait, have to wait, 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 wait. What makes her alpha? Because she makes more money? 
Well, what makes her alpha in this conversation of what we're talking about is if he's starting at zero and he has no ambition, he does not want to raise any standards in his household and the woman in the household is the one that's raising the standards, the income and the legacy. So she now is encroaching upon the head in that discussion. Now, I do not like those dynamics because I do not think that it is a, a good melting pot for two people, man and woman, to be able to coexist unless someone's ego can take a back seat. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that, that's what all this really good. That's, that's what it's all going to Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, damn. Go ahead, um, Amalie. Yeah, so I think part of it, you know, I hope I didn't go over this, you know, with my issues but uh, that I was having. But I think that right now the expectations of men and relationships and women has has changed. Or, or as well, the image of it, what it should be has changed. But the reality of the day has, you know, has changed a lot. Like. For instance, I'll say this, you know, 50s, 60s, back whenever a household could live on one salary. I don't even think that's even really possible today to have a household with, with one salary, you know. And and then we're in a situation where the men, a lot of men were in factories making decent jobs, those decent income, those jobs are now gone. And so if You've been taught since you were little, male and female, that the man is supposed to take care of the woman, to and the woman's supposed to take care of the household. Then, um, at what point does that change? If we both at work, you know, now if the woman can say, "I want a guy to take care of everything and spoil me," but oh yeah, by the way, I don't cook, I don't, I don't clean. You know, that works if you can afford that lifestyle. Like if you expect to have those those old roles, then you have to take that old, you can't take the guy to pay for everything with the old roles. You don't take on your sub the old roles, right? And also, you know, I'm a firm, I'm, I have no problem with paying for somebody to help us clean up. You know, I can afford that, right? So, but if you're not in that position, I think things will be tough for you. But, you know, women are more, becoming more educated than the men, getting more opportunities. Uh, we still got the situation with the uh, the incarceration, you know, and guys can't even get in a decent job once they come home from prison. So there's a lot of other things um, that go into it. But I just think that the image of what a relationship, you know, should change. We can't we don't live in the, you know, the Ken doll and Barbie doll uh, world anymore. We just we just don't, you know, <laughs> Jimmy, I see you shopping at the bed. What you got on this, brother? Jimmy? No, I was just going to say, um, you know, I always like to bring up books. Uh, there's an excellent book by uh, Ryan Holiday. Can you hear me? There's yeah. an excellent yeah. book by Ryan Holiday. It's called uh, Ego is the Enemy, right? Um, and what we're talking about is ego. So um, people have to do what works for them, what makes them happy. But at the end of the day, you have to understand that your ego can't get in the way, right? I've also talked to men who can't deal with a woman that makes more than them. Like, that's, that's right. a thing as well. So we talk about it on the right. one side, but there's some like... Listen, I got friends that have, that, have, that have literally told me that, like, I can't I can't be with someone that makes more than me. And I'm like, are you crazy? But <laughs> to me, when you're with someone and you're building a relationship, I don't look at it as I have this or you have that. It's what do we have? What are we building? And I think that's, that's just my personal approach. So I, my approach is it no longer becomes about you or me. It becomes about, about us if we're truly building together. So, um, but you got to get out of the way of your ego, man. Like, stop letting your ego be the enemy. Right, but listen, do you, but do you listen to your grandma who told you to have a bank account when you made your name, or do you listen to your husband who you're dealing with? You know, it's going to, it's somebody is going why to, have right, to be right? Both both. Why are they mutually exclusive? They shouldn't be mutually exclusive. You do both. There's both. no, I don't see why you, as as a husband or a wife, or a wife and a wife, or a husband and a husband, would not have your own separate account. Yes, you have accounts for joint expenses. A separate hidden account. A hidden account is the case. Right. Who said it was hidden? She said that, having your that, name. That was implied, Courtney. Everybody understood that. That's why. You, that's why she said it was in the maiden name. But here, but here's the thing: if you're looking at it from a legal perspective, that may not be considered marital assets because it's in maiden name. So it may not. It's not necessarily <laughs> hidden. 
You may know it exists, but it may not be considered marital assets. I don't know. I'm going right. to put my business on that point. So, Courtney, is a, Courtney is a lawyer's lawyer. She will look at every angle um, <laughs> except for the actual angle of what it is. Come on, Courtney. We know we know. grandma told you to have a stash on the side that nobody else knew about. I've heard that. I bet everybody on this panel has heard that. And to be fair, and to be fair, I think um, Tracy brought up a great point, right? Back in the 50s and 60s, back in the day, all kinds of shenanigans were happening. I see people ask the question all the time. Why aren't marriages surviving 50, 60 years like they used to? Well, one, because domestic violence is... Oh, granddad had two wives. <laughs> Across town. Hey, listen. Let me, I'm going to tell you right. this. Man. Yes. yes. My damn mother. You know what? My, my, my family disrespectful, man. My damn... My, my, my grandfather, mistress, moved in after my grandmom died. Very disrespectful. It happened. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, listen, it's like, listen, somebody got to take care of him. Call Bunny. You know, Bunny, come on over here. <laughs> Call Bunny. Call Bunny. <laughs> now, now, hold on, Yo, real quick, so, though. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jimmy. Courtney, I want to ask you the question, though. What do you think about the conversation that a lot of ladies have, though, that they're not willing to date anyone that is not of equal means, equal financial means? I think that's I think that's personal preference. I can understand why somebody would take that position, but I think it's personal preference. I mean, and it also depends on why. What is what is the reason that this person makes less than the woman? I think that's if you have somebody who's a doctor and then you have a teacher. Well, I don't know too many teachers that are going to be making equal or more than a doctor. Now, does that make them any less of a partner? No. Um, but I think it's also again personal preference. Somebody may say, "Hey, I want a I want a, a doctor," or a doctor may say, "You know what? I really want my spouse to be able to be accessible and accommodating for my children." You know, if I'm not available, if I'm in surgery or something like that, I need somebody who has a, a more standard schedule or whatever they're looking for. So everybody is a little bit different, and I think we should respect people's choices. Now, does that limit the dating pool for these women? Absolutely. So that's something else that they need to consider. But again, I'm not, I, I don't subscribe to that. Um, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I also want to add that we're just talking about earned income. We're not talking about these other compensating factors that can contribute to the relationship that can make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Doctors are dating entrepreneurs or people who are doing startup businesses because they want to be home. The man might like to cook. He might feel like I want to be able to be there at the soccer games, the basketball games. And I want to be able to coach the team so that way I can make sure that my child's career in the NBA can completely be covered by me and my presence. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not about just dollars. And these people can choose to, to date up or date down depending on whatever compensating factor they feel comfortable with. And Tracy, I was gonna, I was going to get to that, Tracy, because I, to I totally agree. And I wanted, Jimmy kind of stole my thunder. I wanted to talk about the male side of it as well, right? Because there's a lot of brothers out there that said they could never date a woman who made more money than them because they feel that the money is ultimately the control. And to me, that's an issue too. But Jimmy, I know you had something, so I don't want to belabor this too long. No, I was just adding this into the to the overall conversation. Um, my wife, my wife is currently reading a book, and she showed me it's called a uh, "Make Your Kid a Money Genius" by Beth Cobliner. And um, one of the um points in that book it says that people's uh behavior, people's behaviors, um, and also their relationship with money is formed at seven years old, as young as seven years old. So imagine by the time you know you get to be an adult, you're carrying on like you know things that you've learned as early as seven years old. Your how your relationship with money is formed. And I think that's something that, you know, um, add to this conversation is it's that young. We may not recognize it, but, you know, um, studies show that it's listen, just seven years old. Listen, as a teacher, I can tell you that 95% of the stuff you learn, you learn by the time you know your age. That's younger than seven. Count to 10. Wow. Yeah. I'm just saying 95% of the stuff you learn about how the world operates, you learn before you can gotcha. say your gotcha. ABCs yeah, account. So, so as, yeah, as I was, I was just thinking, I'm just taking the data from this book, but that's interesting to me. Um, that at seven years old, you formed a relationship with money, whether that's Jimmy Cointel Pro got your audio. 
Yeah, it's true. He definitely froze up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, but give us what you got. No, so I said, as someone that for several years made less than his wife, I mean, my wife made tens of thousands of dollars more than I did uh, for, for a few years. And I mean, it is difficult, right? To, like to run a household, make decisions, and be like, yeah, um, where your money at? Like, right, we got to pay these things. I need you. I need to throw your money up, you know, for for whatever. Especially if we're trying to make a play, you know, when I need a little, little more money, then it's like it's, the, the the conversations are not that easy when you aren't the breadwinner. I mean, I say that, um, of course, because of who I am, you know, I made it work, but it was. It was uncomfortable, you know, at times. I wasn't gonna let it slide, but I, I was I will say it was uncomfortable telling my wife what to do with her money when she made what not did because I needed her money, even if it was to help us um move forward, even to the point of um I'll give you an example. I wanted to move before even what house I'm in now, I wanted to move to a house at it was a duplex, three story duplex at 19th and Gerard on the south side, like right there. And we, it was, she was really the one sign. She's like, you know, I don't live there, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like, it's 19th and Gerard, 90 grand. That house now is probably worth 700000 That would have been probably a better thing for my family, you know, but it's the one, you know, where do you want to live? Plus two, you know, we're using her name and the majority of her money. I couldn't really, I felt, I didn't feel... <sighs> I didn't feel comfortable enough to kind of push the issue more than her just saying no, like once, like, I don't want to do it. And so we kind of just fell back off of that. And we ended up where I am now. So I, I appreciate where I am now, but this house is not worth $700,000. You know, that would have been a better thing, but I couldn't push that. So like I said, I'm just saying that those, the conversations do become um, uncomfortable when a woman makes, that's what I said, she's making like probably 27,000 more than me uh, at that time period. So it was, it was tough. Gotcha. Were you about to say something, Jimmy? No, no, no. I wasn't saying. Uh, um, well, what I was saying before was, um, you said COINTELPRO got me. I was just saying that I was adding that to the conversation because when she gave me that data and showed me the book, I couldn't. You know, at that age, like it occurred to me that your your um, relationship with money formed at such a young age, at seven years old, and that's good or bad. Right, and I mean that just kind of goes that falls locked up with with children and development anyway. That fundamental piece. Everything from the trauma to the money personalities or relationship with money at all forms at a very, very young age. So it behooves us all as community members and parents and aunties and uncles to be having these conversations about money to try to move things along. But let's check in with uh let's check in with folks. So Kahan said uh facts. Yeah, Corey's in the car today, so he's dropping bombs. By the way, Tracy, were you in the car earlier when we were on uh, Clubhouse? Because you were dropping bombs, too. I know you love to drop the bombs when you're in the car. Yep, I sure was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so Monica says, I think single parents, sp specifically women raising daughters, have a tendency to raise their daughters to be very independent, which can make and it, sounds it to be, and it sounds to be dependent, which can make it, which can make it difficult in relationships when dealing with finances. I, I would agree. Facts, Facts Malik. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> what did he say? What did Malik say? And raise their son to be dependent. Ah. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Marsha says, Ooh. I don't Marcia, by the way. Thanks for joining. Many people have never had a great example of working together as a couple. If you don't know better, it will never change. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Andre says, Big Facts. Jimmy says, Quotable marriage is a T code to wealth. Yes, it is. Oh, Ty. Hey. T-shirt. Hey, Ty. Hey, Ty. <laughs> What's up? So, Adrian says, so if there's a such, if there are such benefits, why don't black men particularly want to get married? I can answer this question oh. as a married man. I'm right behind <laughs> you. I'm right behind you. I, I, I can tell you why I didn't want to get married at first because, number one, I don't know nothing about the tax code, right? So, you can't tell me the benefits of the tax code if I don't know nothing about the tax code. Mm -hmm. So, Number two, um, I I I didn't see before I got married what the, the the commitment and the ability to work together looked like, right? I was one of those team no married people. Like when my when my family found out I got married, they was like, "What the what, how the hell that happened?" <laughs> right? And, be, and and it was because 
I didn't see the benefit of it because I, I think, well, I thought at the time that, you know, an independent person moving, moving in the world could get much further than a person that always had to ask for somebody else's opinion. And Ooh. at that point, I didn't know. And now I know that if two people are working together, the work get done in half the time. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's just, just, you know, it it, it took me to be in that space to understand why you should do it. Gotcha. Malik, what you got? I'm going to say this. Any man that's 35 plus and has a moderately successful career can have Almost any woman he wants is why. Like this, like they, they, the pool of available quality women is abundant. Like why choose one where you could have them all? You know, at that point, and it's like, damn. Like Susan, Susan got this. You know, April got that. Shawanda got that. Like they all great. You know, and what I what I found <laughs> that through li- living vicariously through my single friends ah, is that really they nice. are willing and they're willing to accept more shenanigans once they're above a certain age. You know, so my friend's like, get married for what? At that point, they, I thought it this long. Got you. Got you. All right, let's check back in with the comments. Mm-hmm. All right, so there you go, Adrian. That was, that's the commentary right there. Uh, Calandra Vick, you welcome. Congratulations. Up. Congratulations. 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 That's big stuff. Um, can't wait to see what you do. I didn't see that. I missed it. She got her license. She got a real estate license. So she. Oh, got, I, I, I thought. I, I thought she got a real estate license. Oh no, that too. But no. <laughs> she, she on Clubhouse too. We we me and Tracy welcomed her yesterday to Clubhouse. Yes, that's, 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 uh, right. That's right. That's right. I think I'm following her now as well. All right. So Elizabeth says, "Girl, the trauma. Yeah, it's definitely trauma." Um, Nikki says, "Crazy that these conversations are not had before people get into marriage. That's Crazy. a fact." Crazy. In fact, um, and that's why we're having them, right? We're trying to have those conversations that aren't that popular, but are very paramount and very important. So Monica says, if you haven't shared credit reports, no way should y'all be getting married. Correct. <laughs> Among other things. Uh, Ziggler says, uh, counseling before marriage helps bring all these topics up, but without counsel, some people just don't think to discuss some of these topics. I, I would agree with that. That's great. Can, can, we, can we talk about marriage counseling and who the council should be and what the topic should be because I don't feel like every counselor is what everyone is. So let me put it this way. I feel like there is the actual professional counselor discussion and then there is the religious marriage counselor discussion. Mm -hmm. And are both of them discussing finances? They should be. I mean, if we're going religious, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about Christianity. Money is talked about in the Bible. But no, they don't talk about that in premarital counseling. I had a terrible experience with my <laughs> premarital counseling. You know, with uh, what was so-called, I'm not going to say his name because I respect the show, but so-called pastor had a terrible experience with that, you know, and uh, damn, now I want to know. Yeah, I want to say it. Like, I'll tell you, like, I, I know, I know. Show. I'll, I'll, I'll have no problem saying the name, but out of respect for the show, okay. I'll fall back. You okay. know, I'll put, it, I'll put it in the chat. You he know, he must, got, he, must got some, he must got some juice listen, in the city. Listen, his, listen, I, I could care less about Bull. You know, I wanted to go talk to him, but Beth, I, no, I don't go talk to him, but, you know, but whatever. But he made me so mad. But at any rate. Why did he make you mad, Lee? That's a whole, that's a whole long story. But he, I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you this. He changed on us. My wife really wanted to get married by this dude. You know, um, my wife was a was a member, 10% top, all that. Her mom, 10% top, her sister there, 10% top in the choir. They there. I'm not. I'm I'm just learning about, you know, religion and churches and going. I wasn't even really in that space my entire life. If my wife, cool, we'll do this. I'm feeling it. We're going whatever. And so we, we had been going to Sharon. And then after Sharon... <laughs> She was, she was no, she was a member of the other church, right? So the other church where she wanted to get married and oh. married by bro, she uh, she really wanted him to marry us. We go to marital counseling the first day. I get off work early. We're waiting for 40 minutes for him. He finally come. I'm already upset. Cool. We go in there. 
his whole attitude changed towards working with us when he asked us if we get married, where are we going to join that church? And I said, maybe, maybe we're going to share it back and forth. I don't know. And at that moment, the editor changed change towards us. It was like pretty much like, yo, if you're not going to join, if you're not coming to my church, then it's my feeling, like, why should I, whatever with you, the next. What is bread, man? Bro, no, the next week, you- <laughs> look, so next week we go back, back to him. I get off work early again. I'm using my vacation time now. He over an hour late. There's another couple in there, right? The same day, there's another couple in there. We hour late, you know, still. We go there, talk to him for a little bit, you know, leave. We got it's four sessions. Third session, we go. I take off work early again. He over an hour late again, right? And my mom was retiring on this day. She wanted me to meet with her. You know, financial advisor, whatever, for retirement, an hour late. And I told my wife, like, listen, I got to go. And then he come out and he says something. I was like, yeah, man, I, I got to run kind of busy. He was like, yeah, you're not busier, busier than me. You haven't seen me. like, yo, today I am busier than you. I got to run. And so, you know, I left. He never, he never scheduled the fourth session for us. We just, we just wouldn't do it. And then on the day of the wedding, we found out that he he wasn't going to marry us. It was some other junior pastor, but we didn't even meet. We had no idea who this dude wow. was. And he was there, you know, because he said um, he ended up taking off that day. Wow. And after that, I was like, my wife was upset, so I was upset. I'm like, no, like everything that he did, like he went to get phone calls prior to, it was just a real bad situation, man. You said, you're supposed to be, you know, be so high and mighty. And honestly, at that point, I really lost a lot of respect for so-called men of the cloth. Like the next church he went to, you know, like shout to Pastor Keith Pelzer. You know, when I went there, I had to interview him. I was like, listen, who are you? What are you about? This is what we like. Before I come here, I need to talk to you and your wife. Let's have a seat. Let's sit down. And he, you know, he respected that. We sat down. We had a, a conversation. We understood who each other's were. And then we began a relationship from there that even though I ain't been to church two years, he and I, we still talk. Actually, he was in our chat house, um, our clubhouse. Yes, other day. Yesterday. Yep, I saw it. You know, so he's in this joint. So we, church. Right. So we still maintain that relationship, even though I don't even go, but we still we still talk. It's because of that. But no, you gotta you gotta no. I mean I, you gotta vet who who you who these people are you're talking to. But no, that was a terrible experience. I, and honestly, and I was ready. I'm like, listen, let's get it all out in the open. I'm honest anyway. I don't want no secrets. So if we get married, you can say, I know that. No, yeah, you did. You did, you know. You know, you know, you're getting into. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, Jimmy, you had something. Now I see why. Now I now I see why you was going in on that right. episode. I see why you was going right. in on our church episode. Now it right. all makes sense. Right. Well, right. You should have warned right. me that a pastor was in there yesterday, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna behave differently if I knew a pastor was in the Chetty house. No, no, no. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get to the these comments, y'all. Let's yeah, but before we, when we're looking at the comments, I do think that premarital counseling, like it's it's rough. And I mean, I feel like it's a conversation that because a lot of people don't understand. I mean, just as a normal course of business, a lot of people don't understand money. So you can't even engage me on a level to discuss money because you as a counselor don't understand it. So, again, if a lot of marriages end in divorce because of financial situations, counseling needs to be focused on that coming in the door. Right. And a lot of that we miss a lot of we're kind of like and, and they're on top of just living with somebody. It's like, yo, why is it that you don't know how to throw away your cups? Like, what's good? You know, and I think, but you know <laughs> my fiance is on here. Please, please I'll be not angry with me. <laughs> All right, listen, I don't want to get nobody in trouble now. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. But but my point is, is that, again, a lot of the things that are problematic in a marriage is that we don't even, I haven't even had somebody have those conversations in a meaningful way. And I feel that, again, is that we look to people of the cloth, we look to counselors for direction, which they are not able to give themselves. So how are they going to be able to give it to me? So but going back to going back to Tracy's point, though, I don't know that any of these professional counselors are also trained in money matters either. No, so it's like, it's like a double edged sword. It's like a double edged sword. Neither one is actually. Yeah. You, know, no. you can tell me how to tithe. That's great. 
okay, but how do you, how do we have the conversation if so-and-so has a 500 credit score? And every time we try to go get something done, you know, we have the, the prior point of credit score pulling hold down the whole thing down. And not only that, it's not, even, it's not even just a transaction, but every single time you go to get insurance, your insurance is going to be higher because you have somebody who has bad credit. Like, how do you work through those things? And I think those are the conversations. Uh oh, I just got missed. <laughs> yeah, Courtney, oh, Courtney, you're getting yourself in trouble in here, man. I, talk, I saw Tracy saying go up. I saw Tracy saying go up when you mentioned 500 credit score. So I'm guessing she's going to tell us her boo got a 500 credit score. No, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> but my point in saying that I raised my hand is because I think people have to get out of the thought process that the counselor is the one that's going to uncover all mm. the things that you did not discuss mm -hmm. to help make you discuss them. These are private conversations you're going to have to have, and you're going to need more than just your counselor. Financial planners, you should be sitting to discuss your finances moving forward as a entity together. Financial planners can help you pull up. All right, let's pull out credit scores. Let's pull out what you know. They let's don't financial planners don't know either. No, no, no. I I understand Some that. Some of them do. My point in saying no. this is these are private conversations that you're going to need to have to pull your credit scores, bring them to a professional so you can start have the discussions about your habits, your budgets, what your goal is as a vehicle in your in your relationship. Are you saving? Are you a spender? Do you need blow money fast money? Do you need hair money and nail money? All these things need to be discussed in the budget of the vehicle of the relationship so you can know exactly what you get into and you can't be mad when you see 50 boxes of amazon prime come to the door because i told you right right so listen, I'll, I'll I, think, think, I think you speak it from personal experience like you, you, saying, you, they need to be discussed. she was very specific about that amazon box man yeah 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 I so my experience, you never thought about tax transcripts. Yep, ooh, I know. We don't talk about it because everybody's so focused on credit, and we missed the whole picture. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. Don says, "I think in our community, most of us are coming, and with nothing, so there's not a lot to talk about." See, I have a damn thing. We got married, right? But see, I, I, Don, I agree. But I'm talking about now where folks. I mean, because there's a whole conversation about. I had this whole conversation with a couple people. There are a lot of ladies right now, and I'm not picking on ladies. I'm just sharing some conversations that their list was so high. Their expectations were so high. They didn't want to date the trash guy. They didn't want to date the janitor. Good men, but they didn't meet their quote unquote financial status, job status, career status, business status, whatever status. And now they're still single. And yeah. Corey, he's, perfect. Talk about he's perfect, but he's too short. I can't date right. a short guy. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. that. that that was kind of the point I brought, I brought about because, again, we are getting married later. All right, so Latoya said most people are in relationships and they don't even know how to trust themselves. Word. Um, Got to come in, a, in as a whole being. Yes. Got to be honest about whether you are raised on love or survival. Now, that's a bar. That's a whole bar right there. A lot of people Ours. do not know the difference between being raised on love and being raised on survival. They are completely mm -hmm. different dynamics and they will have completely different outputs. Yep. All right. Ziggler says most of us have PTSD just from growing up in the hood. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Uh, so the, she said it from a point of from a point of protection. All right. So Adrian's mm -hmm. talking about the separate bank account. There's always the expectation that the husband will mess up. And you need to be able to take care of yourself once the marriage is over. That train of thought is problematic in and of itself. And I had to work on that belief. All right. I get it. I get it. Well, but see, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. And I mean, I'm, I'm just being very honest. I mean, I think everybody should have their own accounts. I think you should have your joint husband and wife bank account. And you should have your own Courtney. separate account. Courtney. So when you buy that's not the angle, though, Courtney. The angle was it was implied. It was you in can stop cutting me off. Though. My husband didn't know about it. You can stop I, cutting I, me off. I, I would agree more with that if it was like if she was like stay at home mom or something like that. Then I'm like, yeah, you know, you got to have your parachute. But if you you know if you kind of go work and that's some that's something like a little bit different. And you can't right. you can't well, talk. Courtney, go ahead and say what you want to say first. Thank, thank you, thank Courtney. you, Jim. Well, let, let, let us finish that bar. Let, let me finish that bar. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that you you're saying, oh, well, you know, the husband doesn't know about it. Like 
either he, what what if he does know about it? He knows about the account or maiden name. Okay, he knows about it and what? Correct. I mean, I, I think the, the important part is that you come to the conversation, you come to the marriage, and you come as your own separate people, but you're also coming to form a unit. So you can also have you can have those accounts together, and I think and you have to, but you also should have your own stuff. So when Tracy has all those Amazon Prime boxes, it's not a question of what happened to the thousand dollars in our joint account. You spent on Amazon Prime? No, she spent her money to the things that she wants to do. And as long as you're meeting, and that's why you have to sit as a, a couple to come up with your own goals. As long as you guys are meeting your goals, what else? Who cares about the Amazon boxes that are coming in the door? But the problem is that when Amazon boxes are coming through the door and the lights got cut off, that's oh, where yeah. you have been. Right. Right. So hold on, hold on, Malik. So Adrian, hold on, hold on. Adrian, I want to ask you a question, Adrian. So when grandma told you to have that account, was it to be in secret? and full disclosure with your husband or was it to be on the side and not be known and it was your secret bag Quick why does question, it even matter i don't think that well it does it does so, okay, this is why it, it absolutely matters right so we just sat up here and we talked about trust so how you want to operate in the darkness and be okay with that and we're talking about a show about the economics of love and not bring everybody to the table i think that that's important now can me I, can can I, full I, disclosure me and Courtney argue like cats and dogs. She's like, oh, so I'm just, these are the type of conversations we be having. Can I, can so, I be honest about something about with the, the secret account stuff? My grandmother told me the same thing. That's what I was going to say. I, I, my I, grandmother I, told I, me the I, same I, thing. Like, yo, yo, you got, you got to keep that bag in the tuck. Like, my that. grandmother really told me to keep a bag in the tuck no matter what. So that, this is not, this is not. Uh, that was for attorney fees, Corey. Come on. <laughs> I mean, nah. whatever, whatever you need to use listen, that bag man, for listen, is man. not not to be discussed on public <laughs> airwaves. Correct. But the bag listen, need man. to be the bag need to be in the tuck. Correct. But, my but listen, I get it, man. Listen, man. My grandmother was born in the listen. 50s, trust me. And she was like that. Extra account is mad money. You get mad and you want to stand on your own principles without your husband. You need this cash. Tracy, was that account open in public knowledge or was it a secret? No, it was, it's, it, I, I'm not a secretive person, so I don't... No, but your grandmother, what was her instruction? What was the, even if she didn't say, what was the implied instruction? Her instruction was keep it and have it. Mm, we ain't answering the question. We ain't <laughs> you are going too far down the weeds to say... Look, no, we're, we're, no, we're, no, I disagree. Jimmy, you were about to say something. No, I'm sorry. Jimmy? No, no, I was just gonna say I, I was taught, man, trusting a lot of your camel, right? So the, the the problem isn't having the account. Like so, I said I said I was taught to trust in Allah, but still tie up your camel. Ooh. Point being, like it's okay. not about not trusting; it's about still protecting yourself. But but at the same time, in that scenario, like uh, listen, my wife and I both have our personal accounts, but we both know about them. It, it, the thing All is. Right. It's it's nothing that's 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 in hiding. I want her to have her personal accounts. Mm -hmm. I like so when she decides she wants to splurge on whatever she wants, she's you know I care for her. You took it out your personal account. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So it's no that's it's not a problem. Right. I actually would prefer that. Mm -hmm. right. I and prefer I that. And my wife knows about my accounts and what's in them, and it's no secret at all. Uh, all right, so my wife does my taxes. She, she, she <laughs> my wife does my taxes. She knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nikki says there's a difference between becoming involved with someone who may not be at a great place financially, but they hustling hard and they are on the come up, and someone who is not working. I get that. I, get I agree. That. I agree. All right, so Nikki says I'm down with someone who has the same wealth mindset as me, and we're working together to reach that goal, even if it's further along than he he is. All right, I get that. Wealth mindset. Yep. First thing, first step to wealth. Elizabeth says you better have a, a solid plan you are working on actively. I will not be carrying your big head children <laughs> and you in debt. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> keep the company once again. And by that, I mean broke. Broke, broke. There has to be a plan. Definitely got to be a plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Adrian says, I mean, if you're a woman who's 35 and older, We'll fight with your finance together. I don't think it's too much to ask a man to have the same starting at zero. Hell no. Right. At a certain age, things need to be together financially. I get it. I get it. 
Let's put a pause there. I think it depends on why you why is the person at zero? Did they just get divorced? They have something else go on. And I think understanding those types of things, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we put too much value in money. Money is usually a function of something else. So you have to understand that something else is that were you were you are you at zero because you've been sitting in your mama's basement playing PlayStation for the last year and a half? That's a different conversation than, hey, I just got divorced or, hey, you know, I had a medical emergency in my family or something happened to cause all these problems. Like that, there's a different conversation. And then again, to the, the thought of the thought process is that are you on track to kind of put yourself on a better in a better direction? And, you know, and again, it's not that you're helping people financially, but you as a partner is that you, you try to encourage them in the best way that you can. It's, and like, that's how you build a partnership. It's not that you're saying, hey, like, here's a check. Like, absolutely not. But you're saying, hey, how can I help you in a way that's going to take you to the next level in a way that's productive? Right. And expanding the conversation on sitting in front of the TV, playing video games. If you're a gamer and you're making $100,000 a year. That's a different conversation. Right. All right. So Marcia says both partners need to step up their roles. Men need to learn how to cook and clean and women need to learn how to use a hammer and a wrench. I, I swear I have that. a telephone number for a handyman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got DC for that. But I mean, for real, like I, I like seriously, there's certain things that you just have no business doing. I almost took out my finger as Ty in the comments, like last week with a, with a wrench or so. I don't know what I was doing. I was trying to get the lock off the garage and it's like, we, we almost got to go to the emergency room. So again, sometimes it's just stay in your lane. Hey, Todd, we need we need those picks. We need receipts, bro. I would love to see that. <laughs> uh, Marsha really said, I agree. Let's not. <laughs> uh, Adrian says, second families across town, uh, next door. Yeah, of the block. I mean, if anybody, ever, if anybody remembers um, the Terrell Owens story with his sister growing up across the street from him, mm-hmm. he didn't know it until he tried to date her. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, no, right? I ain't, I ain't hear about that. It's real. Crazy. It's real. It happens. Yeah, so he, he, he didn't says, know his father, and his father lived across the street his whole life. Right. Oh, right. man. So T. Riles, one, welcome, brother. Appreciate you being here. Um, his comment is, we we as men see relationships as a distraction from the gr- from the grind. When you're a woman, is not driven in the same way. Marriage will focus your grind. It is a cheat code, but, di- but directing two is harder than moving dolo. So that was going back to uh, the question of why they asked, why do men wait so long to get married, or why don't men want to get married? All right, so Adrian says that's real, Malik. I hear more and more men say that monogamy is unnatural. That's a, a black wealth at the dark discussion. Yeah, I'm not even going to have that. <laughs> I'm staying away from it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not touching that one. I'm out. I'm not touching that one. All right, Don says it took longer for men to see the benefits of marriage. Marriage changed my life for the better. My wife is on this live, so I'm trying to get brownie points. All right. <laughs> Good man. Good man. Don, Don, Don wife. We love Miss <laughs> Don Johnson. Give him his brownie points. Yeah, give him his brownie points. <laughs> we love Don. Don's the man. <laughs> All right. Zigna Marshall says, uh, in relation in religious premarital counseling, finances were discussed, but maybe it depends on who you talk to because it sounds like all the counselors are not covering the exact same topics. That's a great point. Yep. It is not a cookie cutter, <laughs> it's not uniform um across the churches. So that's a uh, that's a yep. fact. That's why I brought it up. Yep. Oh, great point. So Karan says these are the types of conversations that the queen and I had while dating. We did the whole abstaining from sex, and that's what helped us to have those conversations while while we talk trauma, finances, childhood, upbringing, everything. All that right. Really well. That's awesome. Shout out to you. Yo, you a great dude. <laughs> No, listen, no, listen, I, I agree. I think we, my, my wife and I abstained from like Monday to Friday. We abstained every week. That's going to be the week. You know what we do, I call it, I call it that, Malik. So you vegan on the weekend and you freaks on the weekend. I got it. I got it. All right, so Adrian says, my friends that have gone through premarital counseling, professional and religious, had to discuss finances. Finances is one of the main reasons for divorce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, like, I, I, I I always say it's communication about finance and about everything else because somebody's not on the same page. Correct. Um, and they they didn't establish that page. Well, they didn't establish the book, the chapter, or the page before they got married. 
Correct. All right. So T. Rao says spiritual counselors are not financial advisors. Very different. I agree. Correct. I agree. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> I, I was waiting to get to this one. <laughs> and then he says, you got to chill, Courtney. I'm here for it. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. I'm, <laughs> I'm here for it. All right. What you not going to do? <laughs> All right, so throughout since pastors don't even handle the church funds. That's what the trustees are for. Yeah. Here's the thing, though, T, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but every church isn't necessarily run by trustees. And then you have some churches that are just uh -oh. the puppets, that uh -oh. are just the puppets. Oh, did the the Courtney just disappear? Uh oh. Oh, Chucks. <laughs> Yo, I don't want no part. <laughs> you got rich of bro. Come on, man. Oh, oh, back. oh she no. back. She back. She back. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? What up? Okay. Oh, no. Tell them I, thought, I, I, I thought I thought Tyrone told you to get in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought Tyrone. I thought Tyrone pulled up. I thought he pulled up. I'm Tyrone. <laughs> All right. So Monica, Monica says I think having your own own accounts isn't the issue. Having an account and an exit strategy is an issue for me. So, no, I don't have a problem with, again, having an account. I'm just talking about the secrecy thing and how do you establish trust right. if you are moving in, in secrecy. That's all. I don't have a problem with the account. Right. And I think Monica is saying the account is fine for her. But if there's a reason why you're doing the account to leave, then that's right. the issue. Yes. And that, you know what, Monica? That is a great point. Yeah. Because I didn't pull it up because, listen, real right. There's a lot of women who are going through domestic violence and they can't, they cannot let their abuser, their oppressor know that they have this money and they plan to leave. I've had a couple of family members in those situations and yes, and those in that circumstance, secrecy is a must, but I'm coming from a standpoint of these are two people whole and wanting to do the best and, and walk through life together. But you are right, Monica, you are right. Nuance and context are everything. All right, so Adrian said on the other side, it's the uh, and Casey cheats account. The husband wouldn't know about it. Right. Exactly. Secrecy. <laughs> All right. So I was told to get a prenup by, my, by an older mentor. Okay. Yeah. So that means Elizabeth got some money, y'all. Elizabeth I, got yeah. some money. I shall have a prenup but as well. But even if you don't have money, you should probably have a prenup. Like, even if you don't. So. All right. So like, Adrian, I mean, you come into a relationship with things like my family wealth that I am uh, attached to in the demise of my father. That's not included in marital property, not for my prenup. Yeah, but there's to Courtney's point, there are situations where you could leave a dude some money after your passing. Y'all could have kids, and she he might trick it off. So I mean, there are there are definitely situations where a prenup would come up in other legal. Because Courtney always beats me up about this. You're not using the terms right. Other other legal things. I'm not a lawyer. I just play one on social media, y'all. All right. Um, so <laughs> Other said, legal things. Yeah. Um, she <laughs> said, spiritually speaking, men should be head of household, but many, but many, many successful sisters don't agree with when they carry that bag. Ooh. Anybody want to take that? That's, I mean, that's a fair point. It's a fair point. And I think to me, I think head of the household depends on the issue. And that's, I mean, to like, there's certain things like, for example, I'm the finance person. I handled finances. And that's kind of something that is my thing. There's a whole host of things that I don't touch because I'm going to make a mess of it. Does that make Ty, I mean, but me handling the finances, does that make Ty less of a leader? Absolutely not. Right. But I think, you know, but I think that's the thing. But you have to also trust the person that you're with to actually lead on certain issues. And I think we talked about trust before. We talked about trust in Chatty House and we're talking about trust now. You have to trust the person that you're with and if, to be a leader in a situation. If you can't trust them to be that leader, then you need not be with them. And I think that's marriage is, is much more about business than it is about love. And I think a lot of us get that messed up. It's like, oh, I love this person. That's great. But can you build with them? Because ultimately marriage is it's, it's a business. Can you build a business with them? So it's I'm gonna say this. Inside. I'm gonna say this. Going back to our church episode, I think we all agreed that we need more women in churches. We need to get out of the way and let women lead. So I'm gonna say this, and everybody can do what they want in their household. I think it really depends. I don't think a man should necessarily exclusively be the head of the household. Some men are not prepared to do that. Oh. And listen, that kind of goes back. Courtney made a point earlier. I think it was in Clubhouse when she's talking about the difference between. What? Who was it like? She said familiar. I think she said familial love 
her medic loan, I think she said. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, or, mm-hmm. You know, from from my from my experience, man, of in, in public housing and watching these single mothers like raise raise these boys and to be grown little boys, you know, when I'm doing the certification, going through the income, you would be surprised at how many guys were in their twenties that live in the house and never even had a job. Never like yo, what do you what have you been doing for the past four or five, six years of your life, right? That you but you just live with your mom on her teeth, and you know, and now here you doing whatever you're doing. With her you, what? On her teeth. Her tits. Yeah, the old <laughs> you you I know. I haven't heard it okay. to my grandmother. I was just being clear on what he said. <laughs> okay. the, 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 the old, the old, the, you know, it's, it's, it's like, like, um, and my man Major Payne, Bobby Otide, uh, his mouth, you know, but they, they, all, they really raised. <laughs> They really raising like a lot of grown little boys, and yeah. the, these 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 boys are not prepared to lead a household. And right. even me, I was raised differently. But the point is, I'm not the same person I was when we got married. I just started to learn about finances with, within the past eighteen to twenty four months. I, I think it was buy, make more money, and don't spend money. It wasn't. I didn't know anything about money preservation. Mm. Right. And I have, you know, entrepreneur, fa- I have it. So if you come from a situation where your family don't got anything, mm. all they know is nice house, nice car, and everything else is on the wayside, then how do you, then you, if you don't know what you don't know, that you're going to be the best leader that you can lead. Even if it's down the wrong path, you don't know until you get there, you right. know? And so, so th- those things are um, a bit tough. But also, one last thing I'm going to say, I know it's getting late, is I had a client who was buying a house. She could not buy the house because she used the money to bail her son out of jail. Then she used her money to buy her crib. So now everybody else got to stay in the apartment because he wanted to get locked up. You know, so that kind of love is kind of twisted in a way also. I mean, again, context and nuance matter. I don't know if he was falsely arrested or if he actually did it and is a known criminal. Oh, no. You know that? He did it. He did it. He did it. Okay. All right. Let's get to the rest of these comments. All right. So, Adrian Anderson said, said he zero. did. He did. <laughs> All right. So, Adrian Anderson said zero, zero. No thanks. So, Adrian ain't with it. All right. Ty says, I actually handed, handled that with a screwdriver. Didn't take much to do. I am so here for this. <laughs> All right. Out of top prayer movie. Oh, man. Yes, John. Yes. Yes. All out of that. top prayer movie. Yeah. Yeah. Let's A lot of people dog Tyler Perry for some of his movies, but he be touching on real topics. He does. He does. Um, Latoya uh, says we always talk the spiritual head stuff, but is that the partnership built on religious principles? If not, we need to leave the quotable behind. Um, um, a head of household isn't just spiritual, though. Uh, I think most people take it from that, and I think it's also very misogynistic. Um, and it's saying, yeah. and a lot of times it's saying that women don't have the tools or the capacity to lead, and we know that's not true. Why? Because um, we're assuming the head of household is the man. Yes, I mean, he, he just said it. He just he said man should be head of the household. Uh, and oh, that, oh, that's oh, a common, oh, oh. and again, oh. no, no this is This is a conversation, right? Okay. So, but that's a very common thought out here. All right. So, again, Quran says being a leader is knowing when you don't have the tools to lead. I agree. That part. All right. So he says, uh, facts according, man. These these comments keep popping up. All right. Yes, Courtney. I agree. Know your role and trust your partner. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to chime in. In our house, we stay in our lane. Jump shooters shoot jump shots and rebounders rebound. There are things that Courtney take care of and vice versa. We communicate about these things and love and act accordingly. Shout out, shout out to Tyrone. That was that was major. Good brother Tyrone. As head of household, you want power empower your queen where she is better than you and getting things done. Sure. All right, so Adrian's laughing at Malik. <laughs> All right, so Monica says Malik, me and Jimmy call them Jodies. Yeah, Jody, Jody, my Jody. Jody, my Jody. And if <laughs> can say that in Toronto, <laughs> voice. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, so Ziegler says this reminds me of the recent episode of the TV show Ready to Love. A lady on the show asked the guy this thought, his thoughts on finances, and he mentioned paying larger bills, and the lady could pay smaller bills. Well, that lady voted him off 
the show that night because she wants the man to pay 100%. Did you all see that episode? It was trending for a few days. Yeah. I don't uh, Jimmy, know. Jimmy, that, that's a show Jimmy will watch. Yeah. I, I probably would, but I, need to, I haven't seen that though. I know I haven't seen that, but you know, I would watch that movie. All right, so this like is important. Merch. All right, listen, Malik, answer the question off topic. Where can we get Malik's merch from? Hey, listen, right? Link, link, in, link in my bio. Everything is right there, man. You go down to the t shirts. Which bio? Uh, it's, it's right there. Oh, oh, I see you. Add real estate coach card on Instagram. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Can I can I send this? Can I, t- I like I've been kind of quiet. Well, it's, 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 uh, you go to go to, uh, go to onlyfans.com slash uh, slash coach Carter. All right, come on. Jimmy, come on. All right. I've been I've been kind of quiet about this because I ain't want to send the show off the rails because I you know I mean this this because what I'm about to say is the absolute truth and nobody wants to hear nobody wants to hear shit from a broke person. Oh that's true. So, and so this is the society that we grow up in. And so the reason why you know we we have the we even having this discussion is because the society that we've created. Don't want to hear like that's why homeless people don't get no say. That's why people who uh you know that's why babies and kids really don't get no say because they not bringing nothing financial to the to the party. Nobody wants to hear shit from a broke person, and so that's why these conversations are even had. And so we have to change our ideas around classism if we're going to change the dynamics. So Corey, I want to go say that again, Malik. Corey, he went to the end of the show to drop that bomb. <laughs> yeah, because if I would have said that shit at the beginning, we would have never got to where we got. <laughs> no, nah, but Corey, I think I think that's facts. And Courtney just said something too. Like we rely too much on money. And so when 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 we talking about our community, when we talking about our families, it's deeper than money. Right. It's, and, and Corey, I think your point was dead on. Right. You dropping bombs. We need you in the car every week, bro. But um, <laughs> but I, I think that's real. But there are times when we have to rebel and know that this is a good rebellion because this isn't working for our community. So well, use the money. Well, as the, the, the thing that. about classism. Right. Because this is something that I talk about all the time. And me and my brother, I kill Parker, talk about all the time. Mm-hmm. Classism is deeper than racism. Classes, classism run way deeper than racism. We could talk about black wealth and all of that kind of stuff, but classism is the classism is the thing that breaks apart things way faster than racism will, because wow. people think they're better than other people. Like I like I said a few weeks ago, we live in a caste system, and so mm-hmm. when you get stuck in a certain caste and you and your decision making powers get like it's like it emasculates you. It doesn't whether you're a man or a woman or whatever, especially as a man. If you're stuck in a lower caste as a man, nobody wants to hear that shit. Nobody wants jump. to hear nothing you have to say. I'm a pile on to that, Corey. Um, if you really look at classism versus racism, it was classism that really created racism. It so, was. Um, it was classism people, that created the racism. You're right. right. A lot of people don't realize that because I mean, we're not studying. But hey, folks. I mean, this, this you're, treated a great episode. you're treated different whether you're um. Now, I'm just going to say you're treated different whether you're a dauntless or an erudite. Depending which one you are, you're treated different. That's all I want to say. Oh, before you get out of here, Kamari, um, check, us out, check us out this week. Um, this week, I think I'm going to set up a room on Chatty House, and it's going to say, should women have secret accounts? I'm a ping uh-huh. you, Cody, to get you oh, on. You, on it. It also, we Listen, got the that's a black ball project, Joy. We got the, we got the black assets <laughs> webinar yeah. uh, this Saturday also. Is there a link for that, Malik? That's I, right. I don't know if they register for that. The, uh, the link, you got a text. To, what's the number of text, Jimmy? Can you put it in there, please? I got you. I got you right now. So it's uh, this Saturday at 1 p.m. We got a, a webinar going on called The Black Assets. We're going to talk about multiple asset classes. And in order to register, you have to text the word assets to 81257. I'll put it in the comments. Text assets to 81257 to register. You know, we yeah, gonna start this on. It's, um, it's, it's a free webinar. You know, we're gonna talk about uh, real estate, stocks, cryptocurrency, and precious metals. <clears throat> awesome. Wednesday, right, December right. the sixteenth, I have a mom talk with my sorority sister, line sister, Crystal McGee, MS MBA, who is going to be doing a mom talk where we're going to discuss real estate and putting together a legacy for our kids. 
Boom, boom. Anybody else got anything they want to announce before we uh, wrap up so this community can support us all? I'm dope as shit. I'm sorry. Right. I that, do that, have shirt is, that shirt is dope as shit, by the way. Wow. Go ahead, Courtney. So, Go ahead, Courtney. Tracy, you said your sorority sister. Is your sorority sister also um, going to be the next vice president? I'm just wondering. Who? Of what? Uh, wait, who? The next vice president of the United States. Oh, no. <laughs> My sorority sister is going to be the next president of the United States because she's president elect, you know, Kamala Harris. But who I'm speaking about that I'm going to be working with is actually my Crystal. line sister, Crystal. Just, mm -hmm. just to give a little tidbit, add that in there. Yeah, your, your, your sorority sister will be president in two more years once Biden uh, kicks the bucket. All right, so it's listen. As we, as, we, as, we, hold on, hold on, y'all. As we as we close up, as we close up, Courtney, did you have anything else you wanted to add for the Black Icon of the Week? Because I know it was your grandfather. Was there anything else? Ooh, I put up a. Um, I did share the link. I did share the link. Um, I did do a post about him for Black History Month. I don't know if it was last year or year before last. Just talking about how um, it's an old picture. I think it's from like the forties. And it's just talking about it's him in front of his his business. I believe it might have been Pittsburgh, but it might have been in Durham because my family, for some reason, shuttled back and forth. I don't know if you do you have the link, Kamari. I don't. I share. I think it's in the private chat, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. I dropped it there. I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah so he's um sure. like he is still. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Talk it up. So he and he instilled that entrepreneurial spirit. And I think for my family, he is our icon. He's kind of our North Star. Um, he really kind of late. Like I said, he uh, was born in 1900 and he lived till I believe 1990, 1991, somewhere like that. Um, and I mean, just fortunate enough to kind of have this experience of seeing somebody, you know, despite the odds, because I mean, it. I think it might have been slightly easier to um, have a business um, because of segregation to a certain extent, because, again, it's like, well, who else do you want to get your sandwiches from? Um, but again, it's not something that was necessarily easy at all being an entrepreneur. But he laid the foundation. Uh, you see, I mean, the whole family is not that tall. Um, <laughs> but, I just you know, love that it was like a sandwich shop with beer and wine. Yeah, he was getting into it. Did, did he have sugar rays in the back? Come on, moonshine. <laughs> sugar rays. <laughs> 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 funny. All right, well, listen, everybody. I think it's dope, I that, you, I think it's dope that you have that picture, though. That, that's that's hard. Yeah. Like, the, the yeah. fact that you have that picture, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's amazing. Legacy. That's legacy right there. So, again, we appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Um, again, share this out with someone. We will be back next week at 7 p.m. Any show topics you want to see us talk about, drop them in the chat or come into the Black Wealth Project group and leave them in there. Thank you all for joining us, everybody. Again, we're humbled that you're here and we'll be back next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.